Come on, let's give him a good Holy Ghost. Holy Congress, welcome. Don't stop clapping. Come on. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. It's a great joy to be in the midst of the people of God. And to be part of the Holy Ghost Congress for 2009. And I believe that the short time we have together, you are ready for the touch of the Lord. We're going to look at the word of God on the subject of the divine touch. Before we go into the world, would you please rise up so we can pray together? And then you are ready for that touch. Almighty God, we thank you for this hour, for this moment. We bless you, Lord, for your people. We thank you for the great way you have started with us since yesterday. Thank you for the outpouring of your spirit. Thank you for the expectation of your people. We're believing that tonight every one of us will have the divine touch and we pray you make impossibilities possible you break every yoke in every lie you destroy the works of the devil and you pour down your blessings upon your people in Jesus name touch us one and all we receive by faith we give the glory to you thank you Lord for everything in Jesus name we pray thank you very much we can sit down as we look at the word of God from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible you'll find when God touched people why God touched people how God touched people and what happens when God touches you the songwriter put it this way he touched me oh he touched me and all the joy that floods my soul something happened and now I know he touched me and he made me whole that song has, that song has captured everything that when he touches you he makes you whole there are many distinct acts of divine touch revealed in the Bible and as you look at all these various acts of divine touch you will see the specific area where God touched them we read in the book of Genesis when Jacob was coming back from the foreign country he was going to meet Esau his brother their relationship had been strange and Esau was coming back so that Esau will destroy him that's the time he began to wrestle 
and as a wrestle with the angel from heaven he received a touch and that eventually resolved the problem between Esau and Jacob the touch of God on Jacob the Bible records the touch of God on Elijah Elijah was discouraged he was depressed he wished he would die he felt it was all over and then he slept on a juniper tree and again the touch of God was the thing that raised him up and what great ministry followed after the divine touch number three we read about Isaiah he saw the glory of the Lord and he saw, as he saw the beauty of his holiness he saw his own wretchedness and sinfulness once again everything turned around when Isaiah received a divine touch I'm sure you've heard about Jeremiah God called him he felt incompetent incapable unskilled without experience again the Lord touched him and that strengthened him as you come to the New Testament you read about the leper that came to the Lord Jesus Christ and he worshipped him and he said Lord if you will you can make me whole you can cleanse me the record of the Bible says the Lord stretched out his hand and he touched him and he cleansed him I'm sure you've read about the blind man that came to Jesus what do you want me to do unto you Jesus said and again he wanted to receive his sight Jesus is a great physician and he's here today and if you are sick I want to tell you the Lord will touch you and heal you and the Lord touched him and he received a sight it was in the city or town of name there was a widow there they had only one son that one single son died I'm sure you know such a woman will be unhappy sorrowful and as they were going to bury that young man they met the Lord here you will meet the Lord I said here in this place you will meet the Lord as they met the Lord sorrow came to an end all the oppression in the heart came to an end how did that happen Jesus stretched out his hand and he touched the coffin and that man got up and came alive again the divine touch for Jacob it was a touch of reconciliation for Elijah it was a touch of restoration for Isaiah it was a touch of righteousness for Jeremiah it was a touch of reassurance for the leper it was a touch of renewal as his flesh came back again 
And all the leprosy went away. For the blind man, it was a touch of recovery. He recovered his sight. Jesus, the Savior and Lord. Jesus, the great physician and the healer. He brought healing into that man. And the Bible reassures us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And today, as you trust the Lord, if you are sick, He will heal you. Oppressed, He will deliver you. Barren, He will give you children. If you are suffering, the Lord will take the suffering away. For the dead son of that widow woman, it was a touch of resurrection. As, as we are all here tonight, and we are looking for the touch of the Lord, reconciliation where there is conflict, restoration where there is discouragement, righteousness when you feel the burden of your sin, reassurance when you feel incapable of what the Lord is calling you to do, renewal if you are sick, recovery if you are blind, resurrection if any sin is dead in your life, the divine touch saves the sinner. The divine touch heals the sick. The divine touch delivers the oppressed. The divine touch sanctifies the believer. The divine touch strengthens the weak. The divine touch restores those who have gone astray. The divine touch empowers the people of God. The divine touch recreates us to be conformed to the image of his only begotten son. As we look at this from the Bible, and we're looking at the divine touch, I'm going to give it to you piece by piece. I'm going to treat what you number one, number two, number three. And looking at those three things that the Lord does. And then you fit yourself into one of those three. And as we come before the Lord after the message, the Lord is right there by your side. He will touch your life tonight. Can I hear a good, good amen? Three things I said. Number one, the transforming touch. The transforming touch. Number two, the triumphant touch. The triumphant touch. That's the thing that pulls you over. Makes you more than a conqueror and gives you the spirit of the conqueror in your life. The triumphant touch. Number three, the transcending touch. That's what transcends. Means it goes beyond the natural. This is a touch that gets you beyond your natural power, natural strength, natural skill, natural ability. The transcending touch. Come back to number one again. Transforming touch for all repentant sinners. Transforming touch for all repentant sinners. Number two, triumphant touch that heals recurrent sicknesses. Triumphant touch that heals recurrent sicknesses. Number three, 
transcending touch for a long time servants transcending touch for a long time servants number one this is where we all start the bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of god the bible says our sins separate us from the almighty god and when we recognize our sin and we're looking for the blessing of the Lord and it's a big barrier between you and the Almighty God you want to reach out to the glory of God you want to reach out to the blessing of God you want to reach out to the provision of Calvary you want to reach out to the abundant life the Lord has come to provide as you try to reach out and reach forth there is a wall of demarcation between you and the Lord that the blessing you are seeking for you cannot get the provision of Calvary you are dreaming of you cannot receive then you say what will I do it is then you understand you need a touch a touch of transformation a touch that will turn everything around in your life it's then you turn away from your sin and then you have the transforming touch for the repentant sinner this is what happens when we come to the Lord we turn to the Lord in fact we are told in Acts of the Apostles chapter 3 verse 26 Acts chapter 3 verse 26 unto you first God having raised up his son Jesus sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities can you see that that is the touch the Lord gives us I want you to notice one word there turning, turning, turning in turning away everyone from his iniquity that's what the transforming touch of the Lord that's what he does in Romans chapter 12 verse 2 and be not conformed to this world but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God that tells us the transformation it says you are not conformed to this world but because of the touch that comes upon your life the divine touch number one it turns you around number two it transforms you and then there's a change that comes from within and it is a change because of the divine touch that you experience I we grateful to God that tonight the Lord is there right where you are standing or sitting and his promises will never fail and the power of Calvary will never fail and as you surrender yourself to the Lord tonight that touch will come upon your life number one you are touched and turned around number two you are touched and you are transformed number three you are touched and translated in Colossians chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 13 Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 
who has delivered us from the power of darkness and then it says and he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son it's not talking about the rapture that rapture is still in the future that one he will translate in the future this one has happened already he said he has already translated you out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son number one thing the transforming touch make sure that you are touched and turned around number two you are touched and you are transformed number three you are touched and translated that solves the problem in the soul but we live in a body what if I am saved but I am sick what if I'm born again? But I have a body in, in my body. What if I'm delivered from sin? But then in my body I need deliverance. That leads me to number two. The triumphant touch that heals recurrent sicknesses. The Lord is here tonight. I said the Lord is here tonight. And if you're sick, it's right there by your side. It will heal you. I said it will heal you. Heaven says it will heal you. The Almighty God says he will heal you. Christ himself said, I am coming to you right now. I am going to heal you. And the Holy Ghost bears witness in our heart according to the promises of the Lord. He will heal you. The, tra the triumphant touch that heals recurring sicknesses. And there are many parts of the Bible we can refer to. There are many parts of the Bible we can refer to. When Jesus touched the sick, when Jesus touched the afflicted, when Jesus touched those who are suffering, and the moment the touch came upon them, they were healed. And you remember what the Bible says. Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday. Today. And forever. And he's no respecter of person. He's right there by your side. I rejoice with you tonight. You'll be healed. I said you will be healed because of the touch of the Lord. Let's look at Mark chapter 7. In Mark chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 33. And then I read verse 35. And then I read verse 37. Mark chapter 7, verse 33 and he took him aside from the multitude and he put his finger into his ears and he speech and he touched his tongue he touched his tongue you are waiting for the touch of the Lord you are expecting the touch of the Lord you expectation will bring manifestation and tonight is your night I said tonight is your night he touched his tongue not only your tongue it will touch your eyes it will touch your ears it will touch your kidneys
keep me. He will touch your lungs. He will touch your brain. He will touch your body. He will touch every part of you. He will even touch your children. He will touch your husband. He will touch your wife. And think about it is going to touch your business. Something good is happening to you tonight. Something good is happening to you tonight. Verse 35. And straightway his ears were opened. Straightway his ears were opened. I love that word straightway. It means immediately. What does that say? I said what does that say? Number one, it's an irresistible touch. No sickness can resist the touch of Christ in your life tonight. No demon can resist the touch of the Lord on your body tonight. No evil power can receive the touch of the Lord upon your life tonight. Number one, it is an irresistible touch. Number two, it's an incomparable touch. The man had never had any touch like that before. Maybe a doctor had touched him before. A friend had touched him before. A helper had touched him before. But this touch is unique. It's an incomparable touch. And the touch you're receiving from the Lord tonight is comparable to no other touch you ever experience in your life. Number three, it's an incomprehensible touch. The man couldn't understand that within the twinkling of an eye, the touch of Christ came upon him and immediately straightway he received his healing. Number four, an indisputable touch. Nobody could contradict it. Nobody could say, is it so? Is it not so? It is so. After tonight's meeting people that see you, they will see something upon your life. Indisputable. This one nobody can argue. The touch of the Lord will make you whole in Jesus' name. Number five, it was an invincible, invincible touch. That is something that cannot be conquered, that cannot be overcome, and cannot be hidden. Number six, an irreversible touch. The blessings you are receiving here during this Holy Ghost Congress from the beginning to the end is irreversible. Irrevocable, nobody can take it away from you. The Lord loves you. And the Lord has decided to bless you. You'll be blessed at home. Bless in the church. Bless in the way. Bless at the Congress. And you carry all your blessings back home and nobody will take it away from you in Jesus' name. An irreversible touch. Number seven, an indispensable touch. Indispensable touch. I'm sure you know there are people that come to the Congress almost like spectator. I was there when it started 1998. I've never missed any Congress. I've been coming and coming and coming. When other people are full of great expectation, they're just looking out. They say, Praise the Lord. I was here last year. Don't let anybody distract your attention because there is an indispensable touch. A touch you cannot deal without. Touch your soul and touch your spirit and touch your heart and touch your body and touch your family and touch your, and touch your business. Thank God it's coming. I said 
thank God it's coming. It's coming to me. I said it's coming to me. How about you? How about you? It will get to you in Jesus' name. Number three, I'm talking about the transcending touch. For a long time servants. The transcending touch for a long time servants. The time came in the life of Elijah. Elijah was a prophet of fire. He was a person that prayed. And then he told Ahab, he said, Mark it down. There will be no rain all these years according to my word. And then eventually just took the key and went away. That man was a man of power. Prophet of fire. That had authority. And then eventually he prayed again. You remember when the fire came down? You remember when the rain also began to fall? And then eventually he killed all the prophets of Baal. He wanted to bring reformation to the nation. And then Ahab went back home and told Jezebel, listen to what Elijah had done. And then Jezebel sent to Elijah and said, uh -huh, well done. I see your hand. I hear the news by this time tomorrow. I'm going to deal with you. And then let us see who is strong. We're surprised. Elijah became afraid. Don't point a cursing finger to Elijah. Did you, did you ever go through discouragement in your life? Depression in your life? despair in your life were you ever tempted to say there's no point continuing I want to end my life I welcome you here tonight there's going to be a touch in your life all that depression will vanish away all that discouragement will vanish away because God has seen you where you are he, know, he knows what you are thinking about. He knows your depression. He knows your discouragement. He knows all the pressure you are going through. And the Lord is saying tonight is the end of that depression. Tonight is the end of that discouragement. He sent an angel from heaven and he touched Elijah. New strength came, new power came, a new authority came. And we welcome that power tonight. We welcome that touch tonight. Forget, forget your discouragement. Forget your despair. Forget the pressure. Forget what you are going through. Don't look at yesterday anymore. The water is gone under the bridge. The night is gone. The day star has arisen. And today will be a day of waking up in Jesus' name. A touch is coming upon your life. How do we know that? Number one, the promise of the Father. He has given us a promise. He's a faithful God. And according to the promise of the Lord, I want you to be expecting. I want you to be waiting. And the promise is going to be fulfilled in your life. Number two, the power of the Spirit. That Holy Ghost is here tonight. After all, this is Holy Ghost Congress. The power of the Holy Ghost is everywhere. You don't have to run there or run there. Right at that point where you are, the power of the Holy Ghost is there. 
Number three, the prayer of the saints. What you all three are gathered in my name. There I am in the midst of them. I need two of you. If three of you, if thirty of you, if three thousand of you, if hundreds of thousands of you, if you can agree together as touching any sin that you ask, the Lord said He will do it. Number four is the privilege of His servants. It's a privilege tonight to come before the Lord as servants of God, as children children of God, as sons and daughters of God, to receive a divine touch. Number five is the provision for the sinner. The Lord has made the provision, and he says, everyone come unto me, and the Lord will touch us, and everything that needs a change, he will change. Anything that needs a turning out, he will turn around. Number six is the petition of the sick you see that what the sick people are asking for tonight oh Lord touch me oh Lord touch me touch me and remove my sickness touch me and remove my infirmity it is done I said it is done number seven the performance of the son the son of God Jesus Christ Christ, the merciful Christ, the loving Christ, the redeeming Christ is there by your side and is going to exchange your weakness for his choice. And tonight, without any exception, everyone is going to receive a touch of the Lord. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? The Bible says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Your weakness is gone. Oppression is gone. Depression is gone. You will mount up as we like wings with the eagle. You will run and not be weary. You will walk and you will not faint. The fainting days are over. The weary days are over. The powerless days are over. Days of poverty over. And for those who have married, days of miscarriage over. The days of barrenness over. You will walk upon the hedge of the enemy. You will be victorious. Because a torch is coming upon your life right now. Heaven is ready. God is ready. The angels are ready. The Holy Ghost is ready. The Son of God is ready. Anybody there? Anybody there? Anybody there to ready to receive the power? To receive the torch? Transforming torch? Triumphant church? Transcending torch? Coming upon your life right now? Why don't you just raise up your hand to the Lord? I say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Tonight is my night. Tonight is my night. I'm receiving it now. I'm receiving it right now. I'm receiving it right now. The torch of the Lord upon your life is coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Receive it. Expectation brings manifestation. Expectation brings manifestation. Expectation brings manifestation. Expecting it. Accepting it. Knowing it is done. It's coming your way right now, wherever you are. The touch of the Lord. The divine touch. The touch that saves. The touch that heals. The touch that delivers. The touch that turns everything negative around in your life. Amen. And everybody said. Amen. Amen.
raise up those beautiful hands and touches coming your way. If you're sick, it's going to heal you now. Oppression, depression, whatever it is, the Lord is taking it away right now. He loves you so much, he'll not allow you to go empty handed. Father, in the name of Jesus. We glorify you and we exalt the Son of God tonight. We bless your name because we are going to give everyone the divine touch. I pray, Lord, for those who are struggling with their sins. Touch them and forgive them in Jesus' name. Touch them and transform their lives in Jesus' name. Any sickness, any oppression, any affliction, any curse, any yoke, Lord, I send the divine touch upon everyone right now in Jesus' name. That disease be healed in Jesus' name. That infirmity be removed in Jesus' name. All that attack, all that affliction, I command you, the yoke is broken in Jesus' name. Cleanse the leper. Cleanse the leper. And HIV, AIDS, you have no right to be there anymore. A divine touch is coming on that patient. Be healed in Jesus' name. Those who are barren, Lord, I pray you break the yoke of barrenness. Touch them now. Touch them now. Touch them now. Give them miracle children in Jesus' name. And touch their families. And touch their businesses. That everything will turn around from tonight in Jesus' name. And those who are discouraged. Those who are depressed, those who are downtrodden, raise them up in Jesus' name. Discouragement be gone in Jesus' name. Depression be gone in Jesus' name. All the works of the devil are destroyed from your life. And the Lord has touched you tonight. Be free and remain free. And keep on enjoying your liberty, your healing, your salvation, and your freedom in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said... Come on, let's put our hands together for the King of Kings. The only one who can touch you divinely tonight. Come on, let's give him a good Holy Ghost, Holy Congress welcome. Don't stop clapping, come on.